Bilingual education has a long history and perspectives on it have changed over time. Despite its lengthy history, there are many misconceptions about bilingual education that are not debunked or even discussed for that matter. There is confusion about how bilingualism will affect a child's language development, misconceptions about how language is stored, processed, and accessed in the brain, and there is also misunderstanding about what bilingual education model works and the benefits and drawbacks of bilingualism. Popular parenting literature suggests that acquiring two languages can result in language delay. However, there is no link between bilingualism and language delay. Parents are sometimes concerned that knowledge of two languages may be confusing. Children might use two languages in the same sentence. However, research indicates that the ability to switch back and forth between languages, called code switching, is a sign of mastery of two linguistic systems. Another parent concern is, how do we teach bilingualism? There are many different approaches to teaching and using multiple languages, but with a child, researchers note human interaction, being read to, or talking to a child is the best method for fostering both first and second language development. Moving on to theories about bilingualism and misconceptions. First, we must remember that theory changes over time and in itself is theory. Early ideas of two languages within an individual fall under the separate underlying proficiency model of bilingualism. This theory sees the two languages existing separately in the head. There are two ways to visualize this theory. The child's two languages on a scale, language one on one end and language two on the other. While one language skill and knowledge increases, the other decreases, essentially leaving one language at the expense of the other. Another visual of this separated approach or theory is of two balloons in the bilingual child's mind. Language 1 and language 2 are two separate balloons. As one language balloon increases in size, the other balloon diminishes in size. And in comparison, the monolingual child's balloon is full and robust. Both of these visuals of early language ideas and theories have been discredited. One alternate theory that can help us understand how language is stored, processed, and accessed in the brain is the common underlying proficiency model. This theory can be pictorially represented by two icebergs that are separate above the water but connected underneath. This model suggests that in outward conversation, the two languages are visibly different, but in the mind, the two languages do not function separately. They operate through the same central processing system. Research on bilingualism continues today, and additional theories have gained traction and expanded the views of how two languages function in the brain. Now that we are informed about how language operates in the mind, we can think about education and what works. There are many different models of bilingual education. The biggest, biggest misconception here is in the wording. What works is entirely dependent on the goal of the educational model. Language goals of different bilingual, bilingual education models differ, including monolingualism, limited bilingualism, bilingualism, and bilingualism and biliteracy. In addition to these language goals of different models, inherent societal and economic goals exist in relation to each model. Consider what it means for a minority language student to be placed in a mainstream or submersion program. The goal of this program is monolingualism and the language of the classroom is the majority language. While the goal is com competency in the ma majority language, a question we should be asking is, what happens to the student's original or minority language? The student is not receiving school instruction in his or her language. Therefore, his or her language skills are not growing in this context. This may suggest that his or her language is not valued and the societal expectation is assimilation. What language skills, heritage, and culture is this student losing in this program? On the other end of the educational model spectrum is a program referred to as either two-way or dual language. The goal of this program includes bilingualism, biliteracy, and maintenance and enrichment of both languages. This program is for minority and majority language students and is taught in both languages. Consider what it means for both minority and majority language students to be educated in two languages where heritage, culture, and language skills are both appreciated. The goal is to have and add language skills in both languages by teaching content in two languages. Directly relating to programs for bilingualism and biliteracy are the benefits of bilingual education. Important to note is that views on bilingualism have changed over time and often are influenced by the majority language and those in power. Will the speakers of the majority language accept the value of minority languages and of bilingualism? This plays into how, when, and where bilingualism as a benefit is accepted, believed, and discussed. Consider a CEO of, of an American company who is bilingual in English and Spanish. How does this compare to an immigrant who knows both English and Spanish or even to a tourist who knows Spanish and French? When and where is bilingualism valued? When are we likely to see the benefits and when are we most likely to see the drawbacks? Either way, bilingualism has many benefits. Free
created using Powtoon.